Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I am, you know, I wake up every day and I have to pinch myself and I have to think about a couple of things. How, how did I get there and what do I rely on to be who I am today and who I would like to become in the world? And I'm reminded by that by a very special person that you're going to hear from today, probably in a role that you don't see them in very often. And that's Brandon, Brandon Foster. And again, I just want to tell you throughout this show, we may not get time. Please check him out. Go to Brandon R. That's the letter R, foster.com. Lots of ways to follow him, social media. But the most important thing, he is in this world to help you become confident AF. And we'll talk about that. But today, besides being an author, a badass coach, somebody that's out in the world that helps people like me, entrepreneurs, really step up our game. Why? So that we can be in more service for all of you. See, that is the game. That's the end game for a lot of us. And yeah, I'm sorry for the game metaphor, but I am a ping pong player. So you just have to excuse me on that. Today is one of the most important conversations I think we could have about confidence and about business. And it is an ingredient that so many entrepreneurs, and and honestly, if you work with Brandon, you're not going to be able to step away from this. It is the secret ingredient of co-creation and faith in business. And it is a secret ingredient because if everybody in business knew about it, we would have an entirely different framework. Brandon, it's so great to have you again. Yay. Thank you. Excited to be here today, Dr. P. Can I hear an amen for talking about this? <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to have a hallelujah. Um, you know, there are so many things that could influence us on the way to being who we've become. And certainly in my life, I've got to in- experience many different sides of faith. Um, but what I realized today is I am who I am because of what I have learned and I'm still learning. But I wanted to ask you this. This is important for you. This idea, the secret ingredient of co-creation and faith in business, it isn't just a thing for you. It's it's your essence, isn't it? It's a part of who you are. It's in what you do and it's in what you say. Am I overstepping by making that statement? No, <laughs> you, you are. You yeah, are not overstepping. Yeah, because I got to tell you, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even begin to know how to walk that back. Just say it. Um, <laughs> But this is something you and I have in common. We haven't talked about it very much, but we have it in common. I wanted to ask you this question. Look, co-creation, faith, confident coach, mindset expert. This is you in the world. You're also author, incredible book, but you're here in the world to share some things with people that I believe will get them from a place of complacency they don't know they're at to the place of unlimited possibilities. Let me ask you this. Co-creation has meanings for different people, but I want to hear from you what that means to you. Oh, that's a good question. Co-creation for me is... I want to think about how I answer this because I have a lot of different definitions, but what is going to be the best for all of you all to hear today that's resonating the most? It's just knowing and believing that you are loved and adored by your creator and that your creator has your back. That's really the biggest piece because one of the biggest challenges for, and it's not just entrepreneurs, anybody going through life that's in the, in the business world, even not in the business world, 
is overwhelm, right? Overwhelm. And overwhelm for me always comes when I'm trying to do everything on my own. My own understanding, my own ideas, my own limited human perspective. And I'm not allowing infinite love, infinite intelligence, all knowing, creator of the universe to help me, you know? And it's so funny because one of the things that really stood out of me is sometimes people just be cray cray, all right? And they will hurt your feelings. They will do something you don't like. And I remember I had, I'd been really stepping into this idea of co-creation with like the marketing of my business and what's the next action to take to uh, create new content that's going to resonate with people and help people like all those different pieces. And I remember someone had done something and I don't remember where I read it. I don't know if it was a YouTube video or whatever, but, but, or maybe it just came from me. I, don't, I really don't remember where, but it was just this idea, which is Brandon, do you want to take this into your own hands and try to do justice or bring justice in this situation? Or are you going to trust the whole creator of the universe to take care of it for you? And it was kind of like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good, God. Like, I'm not even, like, you know, you created the, you know, all the whole planet Earth and the universe, all that stuff. So what am I going to do? Like, throw a throw a thing of, of queso at somebody because I'm upset. <laughs> like, I think I'll let you take care of it instead. And I feel for me that the big piece of co-creation is so many people get caught up, especially in business, over perfectionism over not making mistakes, over um, not knowing the answers or the solutions. And I was getting caught up in that like all the time. And I finally realized like, you know, one of my favorite faith-based Bible verses is um, if anybody lacks wisdom, ask and you'll be given generously. Right. And I was like, okay, all right. Here we go. Let's take out. Let's take out the piece of paper and start asking away. And it solves so many pieces of overwhelm and you know, really just trusting that if I needed to know something, it was going to be shown to me. And if I needed guidance, the way would be shown. And if I wasn't sure what to do, it was okay because I didn't have to know this red hot second. It just solves so many problems and challenges for me in the, the best and easiest way possible. What I love is, I used to say this, this is, this just shows you where I was when I was, you know, a little bit younger. I used to say, yep, God, God's my co-pilot. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. I don't remember if it was conversation I had with T.D. Jakes or I, I can't remember exactly. Or Les Brown, somebody, somebody that I was very naively interviewing, like my first year of doing this 20 years ago. And they yeah. said to me, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And I said, "Uh oh, like my brain is gone. I said, oh, no. God's not the co-pilot. You the co-pilot. God's driving the ship. And the sooner you figure that out, the easier life's going to get for you, honey. And just hate that honey thing, don't you? But I never forgot that. And that was like a light bulb went on. And I think it's it's really interesting because in a sense, we are co-creating but what you just said really is you have a trust and i think a belief you know i think for a lot of people they believe this is a malevolent universe it's like angelona angelina jolie playing that malevolent character with the horns but someday you wake up and you realize no no what'd you say brandon God has got my back. Let's talk about what that really means. Because you see, that's a level of confidence. Right? Yeah. And, and the stronger that confidence muscle is that God has your back, where will that take us? Yeah. So I feel like there's a few pieces to this. First thing I want to say is let's not forget that we have free will as human beings. Let's not. And that's why I call call it co-creation. You know, I always joke with people. I say, God's going to give you the worm. God gives the worms for the birds, but they have to leave the nest. 
right? So you they know, have to eat I, the worm too. I feel like a lot. I feel like a lot of people focus so much on like the mindset piece or the meditative piece and the affirmations, but all of that is to lead you to inspired action, to take action, to exercise your free will for your, 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 your business, whatever it is that you're, you're doing. And I think that's really important. And I think with co-creation, not think I know with co-creation that the beauty of co-creation, uh, you know, there's a difference between laziness and action and laziness of thought. And laziness of thought costs more than laziness of action. Mm. Because wow. if you ask, what is the quickest, easiest way to find my ideal clients with the least amount of action and the least amount of time with zero guilt and shame, you're going to get one answer versus how can I find my clients, <laughs> right? Like you're going to get two different, every single time you ask a question, you're going to get an answer, but that answer is going to be based on the faith that you have when you ask the question. So I truly do. I don't know how we got on this tangent, but it's a beautiful one. But it's, idea, I'm, I'm, I'm getting fired up here. Come on. But Come the, on now. The, the idea is that God having your back means I don't have to have all the answers. I just need to have the faith to ask the questions. Yeah. yeah. And the higher faith you have, the better questions you ask. Yeah. And the better questions you ask, the better answers you get. And the better answers you get, the better action you take and the better results that you have. I'm going to go back to the show we previously did because you brought up two things that just I can't get off my mind. And that is the relationship between courage and confidence because it shows up here in exactly what you just said. I do believe now that I've heard you express this, that it does take that, that, that synergy between courage and confidence even to ask the darn question. Brandon, right? How often do we not ask the question because we already have a predetermined, some kind of pre-natural arrangement in our mind that the question we ask is never going to be good enough. And even if we do ask a good question, we're never going to get what we really want. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just that. It's also that oftentimes we're asking questions because we feel like we've made a mistake. So we're in guilt and shame and judgment. And so it's like, I can't possibly ask God to help me with this situation. Like if it's finances or maybe you, you did a mishire in your business or maybe you did some other kind of action. It just didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Yeah. yeah. And so you feel guilty and shame and like, well, I can't go and ask the creator of the universe to help me with this because I got to wallow in it myself. I, I did this. I took this action or whatever. And that's just not love. Yeah, that's no, definitely not. not unconditional love. And uh, so I do believe that you have to have courage to actually go to your creator and say and know that you're safe and you're worthy to ask questions. I think I honestly think that the, the biggest trait that we can have as human beings with our relationship with God is honesty. I think honesty is more important than anything oh. else you could ever possibly have. Because um, honesty, I always felt like honesty, God works with. And if you're dishonest, you're lying to yourself and you're you're lying to God and you're not inviting him to help you with whatever situation or problem it is that you're you're working out. So I feel like honesty is really big. And I feel like having the courage to be honest and ask those honest questions always gets the best answers and the best changes and best results yeah. in your life. And um, uh, there's evidence for that. I mean, I am so glad you brought that up. You know, what is the evidence? You know, coming and growing up with a life, and I'm telling you, 40 years of my life, with a life of drugs, early, early age. My mom was an addict and alcoholic. She had me when using, can you imagine what kind of child I was crying for years in this world? And my my younger lives growing up in, in you know, a tough part of New York City, I learned the value of, 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 of selling substances and how much candy money you can make. But beyond all of that, you, you know, it wasn't until that breaking point, you know, that breaking point, that point I can't describe it, but that was not my only interaction with co-creation. 
but it was a, it was so memorable to me. I can't describe it because I don't have words. It was the conversation you just described. Please have my back. I don't want to die from this. Please show me how to get up from the gutter of the street in P-Town on Cape Cod. Mm. I don't have the words, but you see, that's the strength that I think I hear you talk about. And it's not just a strength for somebody like me, literally wallowing in your own mess in the middle of a street, out of your mind. And my go-to was that God, that God, that in that moment showed me that God had my back. See, that's what you're talking about. Now, let's fast forward to where we are today. That's the same God that can help me or you or anybody listening when you're sitting there and you've been rejected to get a loan from every bank on the planet to not give up, Mm. to ask the question that's going to give you a new idea, a new possibility. And I think that's what's so powerful about this message, the secret ingredient of co-creation, faith, and business. You see, there is an essence within each of us that allows us what some people call humility to reach out for that which we cannot see but we know is there. And I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I just hearing you share that story is um, it brings me courage and a little bit of sadness, not going to lie, because I empathize, right? I can just imagine how hard that was. Well, I can't imagine how hard it is. I can I can visualize kind of, but like I wasn't there and I didn't live through it. So, you know, that whole thing. However, I feel like a big piece of courage is actually the idea of victor versus victim mentality. And the way that I describe it is also the way that I view true positivity versus false positivity. False positivity ignores reality, ignores circumstances. So it's like, pretend you don't have the cancer, pretend that your finances aren't in shambles, pretend that um you're not getting pretend that you are getting like all the leads or whatever and true positive false positivity ignores what is and pretends like it doesn't exist true positivity says even though this is the current situation and circumstance i acknowledge and i accept it as this is what it is right now i have the power to change it with my free will I get to have power over my thoughts in the circumstance or situation. And I believe that I'm loved and adored by my creator and that he has my back and that there is a way out. That's true positivity. And I saw that as an eighth grade middle, uh, eighth grade language arts teacher at a title one school with half more than half the kids free and reduced poverty lunch. And I could see two kids same home situation, broken home, drugs, divorce, like all the situations pretty much identical. One is just like skyrocketing and soaring. The other person is like just floundering and like failing and just in shambles. What is the difference? There's only one difference. And it's how they view the circumstances, how they view themselves. So their perceptions and their attitude, their choices, how they decide to either harvest the gold and I will never, this will never be my life and I'm getting out of here and I'm finding a way and I know I'm loved and adored and everything's going to work in my favor to help me or I'm never going to get out of here. Mm. And that's the difference between victim and victor mentality. The victim it allows their circumstances to determine their life trajectory. A victor decides, notice I keep saying the word decide, decides <laughs> that they are going to overcome those and they don't have to know how, really. They just have to believe that God has their back, co-creation and faith. And now we're talking about faith, which is the other key component. Yeah. Yes, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and not yet seen. I don't like the word hope very much, to be honest with you. I feel like if you stay in hope too long, you're not really in faith. But Assurance is the key word. Assurance is promise. So it's a promise of things hoped for and not yet seen. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm telling you, my mama just came right out and said what you said, but she was a woman of very few words. You kidding? My second mama, first child at 12 years old, second child at 13, and then she inherits me. Oh, my goodness. Um, but she would say it over and over again. I didn't get it till I was older. She would say to us, you know, from the South, she would say, oh, girls, let me tell you all something. Honey, you know, faith without works is dead. And I'm like, we would look at her like, oh, here she goes again. She's nuts. But as I got older, you know, I got to talk to her more about that. And she told her story how she would just take the action she needed, but she never lost the faith. She never lost what you were talking about. I have the same sense of hope that you have. I, I think that sometimes we hang on to hope as a placeholder for action. And I don't think it was ever meant to be that way. I, I, I think that, you know, part of what you're saying and part of what you're doing is you, you are the coach. You're the person that brings all of these things together so that people can decide what the next indicated thing is they're going to do. But you give them a basis for understanding some principles that will get them to where they want to go. I mean, that is foundational for you, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's so funny because I always tell people, you know, there are thousands of ways to market a business. There are thousands of practical pieces out there, tools, mechanisms, all that kind of piece. And so many people uh, run to different gurus and different mechanisms and stuff like that based on the practical. And I always tell people mindset matters more than anything else because you need to be able to know and ask yourself mindset, is this the right tool for me? Is this the right next step for me? Is this the right time for me? Is this the right person for me? And not base your decisions based on what everybody else is doing. I was on a coaching call with a client today. You're going to love this. <laughs> and every single time I would talk to this person, she'd be like, well, I was listening to this guru talk about this in their business. And I was watching this person do this in their business, watching this person do this business. I said, time out. What do you want to do in your business? Yeah. Forget, forget what everybody, and, and this is the analogy I gave her, and it's a silly one, but it's so crystal clear. Oprah Winfrey never watched Maury Povich or Jerry Springer and was like, what is Jerry doing today that I might be able to use in the Oprah Winfrey show? Okay, <laughs> or what, what is Maury doing today that I can use in the Oprah Winfrey show? Right? No, like no, 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 no. And and is also the reason why she never cared about ratings. She said, "I just want to be the best show I can possibly be, the best show I envision it to be." Right? And there's even a verse I gave to somebody else, which was, um, "Where there is no vision, the people will perish." You know? And I feel like so many business owners and so many people out there, they don't have clarity. They don't yeah. have clarity because they don't have clarity in their mindset. And if you don't have clarity about where you're going, what you want to accomplish, you're not, you're not going to have the right actions or do the right things at the right time, running those pieces. And um, so, yes, that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. So what you what you're saying is really it's so interesting how aligned you and I are on some of these things, because one of the phrases I grew up with was comparison kills clarity. And I'm like, what? You know, you grow up and you, you get this stuff from your parents, like my mom, and you don't understand it, you know, because we'd compare. We didn't have a lot of things, but, you know, we didn't have the shoes. We didn't have, you know, we didn't have that. But you're right about that. I, I can't even imagine Oprah. <laughs> I can't even imagine Oprah thinking, hey, Jerry, what are you doing that I can use? Right. <laughs> Yeah, let's get some, let's get some, uh, what are they, the, the bouncers? Let's, I didn't think you even had a name, right? Whoever the bouncer was on the Jerry Springer show. Let's get some bouncers on the stage, you know? Let's do some of that kind of stuff. No, not going to happen. But let's talk about co-creation and something you said. I really love for you to talk more about this because this idea of being the best that we can be, I love that. I get asked that question all the time. And of course, people want details, but I love that idea. What, the best version of myself, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Clearly not cooking cookies. That's not going to be it. But there are better versions of me, right? How I show up, what I'm doing today with you. This is such an honor to be having this conversation with you. It's the high point of my day, you know, and what I strive for is to show up as a better version of myself so I can honor you and the better version of you. But I love that we live in this world today 
we're counting followers, we're counting this, we're looking at what somebody's doing. You know, I had a client similar to you that said, why aren't you doing for me what I, what, what these people, I said, these guys just sold you a bill of good to get you these numbers on TikTok. I want to make you aware they bought them. And I'm just trying. <laughs> and you're right. What do you want? I mean, if you really want numbers, you can get numbers. But is that really what's in your heart? That's what I hear you saying. What's in your heart? I'd love to know in the last couple of minutes. I would love to know, Brandon, what is your heart? You know, how is your future going to set your future for you? Yeah, so it's actually a relatively easy question to answer because I've been a lot of thought on this. <laughs> <laughs> relatively, relatively. Okay, then let me change the question. I'll make it harder. No. <laughs> uh, there's two quotes or ideas that have just permeated straight from my brain into my soul, my innermost being. One is that the saddest thing isn't the death of someone. It's all their hopes and dreams and aspirations die with them. And I wonder how many people because of fear or lack of confidence are not achieving their dreams, hopes and aspirations that could actually change the world whether it's someone who's going to create a cure for cancer or whatever it is that's going to make the world a better place. The next Mother Teresa, I don't know, but that's number one. And number two is RIP to the missed opportunities due to shyness and low self-esteem. Mm. So I view my mission on planet earth to help as many people as possible develop their confidence, true confident AF confidence. Okay. Badass or inner and at least the inner badass knowing they're loved and adored by their creator so that they can achieve those goals, dreams, aspirations, and not miss opportunities due to shyness and low self-esteem. Mm. Brandon, thank you so much for today. Um, Again, how do we find out more about you? How do we work with you? Tell us about the book. Come on, give yeah, us some so stuff. Let me so give we you can... my personal cell phone number. Yes, <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I think we already posted that on the show today. <laughs> uh, yeah, so first of all, make sure you go to my website. You can pre-order my book, uh, BrandonRFoster.com, R the letter, BrandonRFoster.com. I also have an awesome private Facebook group called Confident AF Mindset Practices for Badass Business Owners. You can go there if you're an entrepreneur, agency owner, founder, whoever, and you want to learn more about these principles. Because you know I have awesome podcasts, Confident AF Live, and I, I really have completely different trainings between the two. So if you want the best of both worlds, that's the best way to get it. The book. Ta-da! Yes, the book, Confident AF, Unleash Your Inner Badass. You can pre-order it on the website. Awesome. Um, thank you for everything today. I've got one last question. I would love to know your personal message. I'd love to know what you'd like to leave us with today. I would love to leave you all with our one reminder. You're doing way better than you think or you're giving yourself credit for it. And uh, this is, I, I have to remind myself of this from time to time, because I, even me, I feel like sometimes I'm going slow, I'm not moving fast enough, like, I'm like, oh, gosh, like, there's so much more I want to accomplish and I want to do, and I actually wrote this for my husband today, because he just wrote his book, and his book came out, and he felt like he was behind in this, this mastermind that he's doing, and I said, you're right where you need, you're right where you need to be to become all you want to be. Mm. And I just want to remind you all that you are right where you need to be to become all you want to be. And you're doing way better than you think. It's actually the first podcast episode too that I did over a year ago now. I love it. Brandon, thank you so much for spending this time with us. And thank you for reminding me personally of a pathway that I sometimes forget. Uh, Brandon, our Foster, everything is there. The book, 
And as he said previously, yeah, once you follow him, I know you won't let go. I'm Dr. Pat. (laughs) Thank you all. We'll see you next time. 